Hey everyone, it's, uh, Joe Glines here from The Automator, and I'm talking with Isaiah's uh, Bays, did I get it right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> um, and uh, and I want to show a little, uh, something I drew up here, and it was, I, honestly, I can't remember why this popped in my head, but it, when I put it together, it really, to me, solved a lot of, um, it helped me explain, you know, my beliefs and some stuff and why we do certain things a certain way. So um, what I did was on the left, I put in, and this is the other thing that drives me nuts, right? And API or uh, application. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I, I really wish that the, the web service, you know, slash website API stuff was called something different just because it causes a lot of confusion with people. Cause to me, they are you know, quite a bit different. Uh, but then there's like your OS system and then the programs have APIs. Um, and under that, I listed you know, some of Auto Hockey. Now, there's a lot more than this, right? I just listed right. some of the ones that we use. And then the stuff on the right is like the human or interface way where we will automate something. And I listed the, some, a couple of those, right? Yeah. And when I drew this out, oh, that's what I was. I was talking to Ryan Wells um, when we were talking about this. And it, like it really suddenly, I really got why when Jackie and I are talking, you know, we, we say, hey, we don't, we don't say you shouldn't send mouse clicks and keystrokes, but everything on the left here, and generally speaking, is, is much, way better, much more reliable and consistent. Right, it is. Right? Um, and the, uh, which is obviously some of the pros. Uh, the cons are, they are generally speaking more complicated, right? That, that they actually take a little bit more knowledge for the user to know how to use um, each, each of these things. Right, that, a control click, I think, is arguably the one that's not. But well, I would, I would say, I would say, um, the most, the, uh, the biggest uh, issue with it is that sometimes, well, a lot of times, it is, they they are limited to what the company wants you to do with it. Right. So, um, my biggest issue is the limitation, not what you mentioned, because the thing is that. Um, most of the times the APIs have their own documentation and that would be the difficulty, which means that each API might behave in a different way. So you would have to read their documentation and maybe that's what you're referring to about um, the difficulty. Um, what I thought about when you said difficulty, what came to mind was that you were talking about like um, it would be difficult to implement the program itself oh, no no I oh just, no so you're talking about like learning about that particular api right well and more that your knowledge of a pro as how to program needs to be a little more advanced right like mm. you, you need let's pick up like dll calls right? right you need to understand how to use a function you need to understand also that you're not actually programming in auto hotkey when you're putting in parameters there and you got to go read what's it c sharp or something okay. No, well, depends. Depends. You can you can call C plus plus things, C things, or C sharp, depending on what. If you're making DLL calls to the system, like for example, um, uh, to Windows, for example, it would be C, C plus plus, and C sharp. But you can make DLL calls to any type of DLLs that you download. So, yeah. but but and, and, <laughs> and seriously, like what you just explained, that's part of my point. Right, is right. like, oh, you have to actually understand the DLL you're connecting to and how you're actually going to, you know, what you need to use. That is for sure. So, yeah, right. that, versus, that, that, that's where the difficulty comes in. Yeah. Right. Versus sending a mouse click, you know, it's oh, yeah. like it's, it's over and over <laughs> the same thing, right? Right, um, right, right. Now, the other really big one, though, is like the stuff on the right here, you know, when you try, when you're going to do something that is going to go across either multiple computers, you know, or, or even just different monitors, right, alone, even on the same computer and stuff. It, you know, things it on gets, the right, you know, just often fail, right? Much more. It gets pretty unreliable. That's yeah, what exactly. Right. Um, but again, you can you can write a script to, to use them in often seconds, right? Or maybe a couple minutes um, and just crank out stuff like there's no tomorrow. It doesn't mean <laughs> that one's right or wrong, right? It's just... It um, depends what you're trying to do. So... Um, right. well, what I would usually, as a programmer, do is first find out if there's an API for that. If there's a way for me to access the commands that they allow you to use. Now, if what I'm trying to do does not have an API or the command that I'm trying to do is not there, 
because there are some things that they do have an API, but whatever I want to do is not there. Then yeah. I would actually resort to going and kind of like um, it would be uh, impersonating, impersonating a user. Right. Right. That means like moving the mouse, clicking, sending text. Right. And actually, in my view, there's two things that you have on the left side. And I want to ask you about your, 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 your way of thinking there that would actually fall in the category of human interface. So control kit, control, control click, I'm sorry, sounds like something that you, that sounds like an API because you're sending a control click, even if the window is actually minimized, right? Yeah. But that is not what is going on. You are actually sending a click via messages. That's what is going on. Right. But that is not, that is not a public API in that case, in that sense. Well, but and that's where to me, it's it's kind of blending in between. That was one I, I did hesitate when I put it down there, but for mainly the reasons, like you said, what I put on the left was it, it doesn't interfere with the human. You know, I can be moving my mouse and doing stuff, but the window doesn't even have to be maximized. You know, right. You're, you're sending kind of like messages directly and, to the control. Yeah. yeah. And the speed and reliability, like it's so fast. However, that one I was kind of hesitant I was so 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 this particular and, and the same with win menu select item so basically again you're sending kind of like a message to it which you actually covered with the with send and post message yeah again those things might not be um qualified as a, a an application programmer interface but they do fall in the sense of the reliability right and and how how you might interact with the well, program yeah 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 and, and generally speaking the way when you trigger them you aren't trying to mimic what a human did right no now, the effect will be the same, right? what a human did but right but it's not saying like move the mouse here or move it and click here it's it's, a it's sending just the, uh, my, the, 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 the signal of a click on that particular location without you having to move the mouse and stuff like that, right? Yeah. 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 And that was where it was, that's where also it was the speed, you know, to me was um, such a huge difference um, in, in, in reliability, but speed alone with how much faster everything on the left is. Um, of course. So much quicker. It, it, it's as, as humans, you know, and I, I think I, told us an example now of course i'll always get the numbers wrong but when i was at uh ti and you know, I, I first started you know um automating stuff i was doing web scraping and i was lump jumping through pages um and automating even then i was using calm at least but i was jumping through pages and having to wait for the pages to load and stuff and then later i discovered they actually had a a, a public api that was very okay so you, you don't need to wait for any of that right and so, so it went from me taking seven minutes if I did it manually to something like two minutes using the web scraping, but I didn't have to do anything, you know, it just all right. did it uh, versus like less than 30 seconds, you know, it was really like five seconds with me because I had to do it. And then it was just off doing its thing, but there was no more input from my end, right? It was all taken care of. Um, right. So one way of thinking about these two domains is, um, that the, the ones that you have on the right, they are kind of a middleman between kind of you, a middleman. Like okay. you're in the middle of, so, so basically the image search in this case is a function that was created by the guy who wrote out a hotkey that in turn uses a lot of APIs from Windows. Mm -hmm. Now he, he, he created a function that uses the APIs from Windows to search for an image. Now. You can search for the image yourself, but then you would have to understand how the APIs from Windows work to actually look for the image, right? right. And, and for example, Jackie actually uh, created a, a function to search for images by himself. He just used the APIs. Instead of using the image search command, he saw like, well, it is very slow for my for what I'm looking for. So I will create my own function. You can do that. So the image search and pixel search and OCR are mainly kind of like uh, middlemen to the APIs that Windows has to do exactly that. You see? Yeah. Now, if you know how to do how to work with the API, 
then you would have a lot of uh, uh, performance improvement, which is what you were actually talking about. Well, and let me let me take that a step further on the stuff on the and I haven't finished this yet. It's been a I started working on it a long time ago, and then I put it down. You know what? And I think this is funny. I think this was the reason why you and I had that call. How long you've been working with me now? Um, <laughs> for, for, one call, I was just like to catch up. But I had an article where I had like 17 ways you can automate like programs. And I think I wanted to just talk to you about some of the stuff I had outlined. Okay. Um, I think that was the reason for our call, if I remember right. Anyway, I had been working on it. Uh, now, this is where, and this is where I knew you, you know the stuff and Tank pointed that to me too. It was like, hey, a lot of these things you listed here, it's really auto hotkey wrapping like the send and post message, right, for you. And I'm like, yeah, that, that I, I hear you. It's really the same thing. But as far as people using auto hotkey, this is the great thing. We don't need to know that, right? Like right. it's just one different way. And, and the beautiful thing is Chris or whoever has wrapped it in such a way I don't need to learn how, which is why I know, I know you were saying you can, right? Right, right. you can. <laughs> but boy, if I don't have to learn all that techno garbo, you know. Right. Just... So, so, so this is, this is the, this is the, one of the lines where, um, that must be drawn between uh, a scripting language and normal programming language. So what happens is that the scripting language is making it easier for you to write code very quickly. Right. So in this case, you just put image search, then the, 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 the image, the path to the image file that you want to search for, uh, the coordinates where you want to search for, and that's it. And it does whatever it should do for you. Now, if you try to do the same in C++, well, you would actually have to read the image file, convert it into a, a bitmap, and then use some functions that is going to actually convert the screen into a bitmap, and then actually compare it yourself. You have to do everything yourself. You see what I mean? So, so um, and of course, there are libraries that you can load into your program. Um, but again, you will have to know how to use that library itself. So basically, um, there's a lot of things that you have to know how to do when you're using a full-fledged language. Now, what is the what is the good thing about that? The good thing is that then you know that you have full control of what you can do. In the scripting language, and you will be restricted. Oh, yeah, and the, and the speed. But in the scripting language, then you will be restricted to whatever they actually uh, right. create, whatever they wrote, right? Um, in this case, I do have a point to make. Like, for example, you see this OCR that you have on the right side, right? You put it as part of the uh, of, of the human interface, but I think that's actually mainly a library that is on Windows that you can actually leverage uh, using the yeah, hotkey the, yeah. the point was you're looking, you're you know, it's searching around. It's oh. not a programmatic way you're getting the stuff, but but anyway. No, oh, okay, I get it. I get the point what you're looking for, but in this case, for example, the OCR. Um, yeah, uh, there is no command in Auto Hotkey to do to perform OCR, right? So you would have to write it yourself. Right. In this case, you would be falling into the category of, oh, that is difficult. That's why you don't see many script, uh, scripts right. actually using that because yeah. you have to know how to use the OCR library. Now, in the end, the OCR library is performing some functions for you, which is making it a little bit easier for you. Well, but again, you have to know how to use it in the end, right? Yeah, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is where after reading more and more of other stuff is like, there's it's just a full spectrum, right? On one side, you have like machine level code, right? And yeah. then there's things that sit on top of that, you know, and then there's right. on top of this, and then, to, and, and, and then you're all the way up to the human interface where you're, you're not even, you know, you're not even connecting with those things, you're doing stuff. And then there's, you know, it's just getting translated down more and more and more. Um, right. The, uh, the auto hockey uh, is somewhere, and I, I think it's a really interesting point of like, uh, you, you, it has wrapped often like the Windows API stuff. Right. And, and we're leveraging the fact that someone has gone through and said, you know what, this, I can, I can really you kind make of it a little bit easier. Well, and to your, to your point, you mentioned earlier, uh, well, let, let's stick with the, the post, send and post messages, right? A yeah. lot of the stuff in auto hockey are leveraging that. However, if you went in to use send and post messages, it is, it's amazing the functionality you could do. However, wow, you really got to know your stuff, right? Because like everything, but 
by creating these different commands in AutoHotKey, you you are basically wrapping it with some parameter set, to, so you know as default compared to the other ones. Right. That we don't have to take care of it, right? Because but that's the whole point. It's right. like, hey, I'm going to isolate this and make it really simple for someone. This is all they got to do for this thing. Um, and, so and also this why... is this is what is called abstraction. So you're <laughs> making stuff a little bit more abstract. Yeah. So that you just say like, I want to find an image. In this case, image search. I want to find an image. It is very abstract in this sense, but when you go down the language, like when you see how the image search function was implemented, then you will see a lot of uh, very specific steps that you have to do to solve that issue. How how can I actually find an image with between those two things, right? And now if you go down that rabbit hole, you will see that everything is translated to machine code. How can you actually, you know, how do you do this whole function into zeros and ones, right? So it is it is kind of like a spectrum as you, as you mentioned. And on the one end, you have the hardware, which just works with electricity, right? On the other end, you have a user that wants to get a result. Those are the, the two ends. Now, between those two ends, you get low-level programming languages, right? Um, like assembly and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then you get uh, these intermediate programming languages that go like C, C++. They, they are low-level, but they are still a high abstraction, uh, abstraction of the code. And then you go higher with scripting languages that abstract those other <laughs> languages. All the way to the point where you just have a GUI that shows like, find an image and the user just clicks on that and it finds it for them, right? So you have this whole spectrum and usually you have to find what is best for you. Sometimes an API is the best for you and it's the easiest thing for you as a programmer, right? But if that API is not working or doesn't have the functionality that you want, then you can go ahead and actually create it yourself kind of like mimicking a human. Um, and, and again, sometimes if you're doing something that's a throwaway thing, right? And, a, and, and, a, and the thing you're trying to learn is completely new to you. It, it's just easier to, to send some mouse clicks, right? Or do whatever. Right, right. right. It, it would make it so much easier. And it, it would actually empower you to do it when you know, send, enter, and mouse move to that location. Those concepts, you understand them completely. It's not the same as talking about, you know, whether that variable uh, has a pointer on it or if it is actually a, a, a class, you know, or, you know, those kind of things that you haven't actually touched on. Right. You still just want to move the mouse and send some text to that particular control. You can do that without a hotkey, at least, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. One, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Did, did no. you have a, okay. It's okay. So, yeah, yeah. The other not insight, but thought I had in this, and I'm curious if, because we haven't discussed, we actually haven't really discussed any of this stuff before the call, but um, <laughs> right. is my experience is, uh, here, I have two main points. One is for the vast majority of people using auto hotkey, the vast majority come in on the stuff on the right. Some of them yes. stick around long enough and start learning stuff on the left and start going, oh, holy cow. Like for me, I use hot strings and hot keys for, for almost months. everything. And I thought I was, you know, all that. And I was because no one else was doing this. And I was actually using it to write my syntax and my statistical language. And I was so fast, right? It was great. But yeah. then later I started learning like web scraping and object-oriented coding. I'm like, holy cow, right? Like I had no idea. Um, so that was exactly. one. The second one though, which I think this one's the fascinating one is when I talk to other, especially, I shouldn't say other because I'm not one of them, right? When I talk to programmers and, and I talk to them and they're using AutoHotKey, um, they're aware of AutoHotKey, but they, they know, let's say, Java or you know, whatever else, other languages, right? Um, they, ironically enough, will more often than not reference the stuff on the right. Why is that? Because they actually use their language for the stuff on the left, right? And they think right. about AutoHotKey as the stuff on the right because their languages don't have those things, right? So, so and that's, that, that is actually that is actually very true. It's actually very true. That's that's what AutoHotKey brings into the table. That's that's what is different 
because yeah. for example i could use python to send an, an http request very easily sure right. now tell python to move your mouse and stuff and you would say like yeah, yeah you can do it you can yeah. do it it's yeah. not that you can't or create no. a gui yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. it is not that you can't it's just that it is difficult yeah. uh, comparatively because right. If you compare Python to C++, of course, Python is easier to create a GUI in, right? So it, it, comparing Python to C++, well, Python is easier. But when you compare Python to AutoHotKey, that, that's a different world. Right. It is so easy to create a GUI here that you stay like, you just say like, okay, come on. Uh, no, there is, as of now, as of, as of yet, I haven't found anything easier than out of hotkey to create win32 GUIs, right? So if you're going in another direction, then I would actually suggest you just learning HTML and, and, and CSS, right? Um, that is actually a little bit easier. Um, but if it is just for a win32 application, then that's actually better. If you want to create a GUI in a fast way, mm -hmm. because of course, C Sharp, which is also considered by some, a scripting language. I'm not 100% sure I have been, because it looks like a scripting language, but it actually has some low level stuff. So I'm not really sure where to categorize it. Yeah. C sharp, you can create GUIs using XML, right? So you can do that. I don't know if you didn't, if you know, if you knew that, oh. but actually in C sharp, one of the things that you can do very easily is to create GUIs using this YAML uh, language. Oh. Which I right, heard so, that. Yeah. Right. So, so, so this this YAML thing, you can use kind of like XML. The only thing is that in the end, you can actually use it to show a GUI with C sharp and actually in Android as well. That's the the whole thing with Android is that the GUIs are created in XML uh, 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 language. So that's the reason why they have been so popular because you can create GUIs in an easy way. Still not as easy as auto hotkey, in my opinion, right? So yeah. my opinion is that. But again, you can. Um, and depending on the language, that's the reason why most of the people who know a lot of stuff from the API still reference auto hotkey on this human interface thing because it is still easier than other languages in in the opinion of people who have tried it at least, right? Yep. That's my 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 opinion as well. Awesome. It, I was trying to remember. I don't know why my brain's not working on this. What is the what is the site that you can go to? And for any language, it has a bunch of projects, and and you can see how to do them in different languages. That would be the the Rosetta Code. Page. Thank you. The, 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 yeah. that's, that, you're right. So the so, Rosetta Code page is the one that actually gives you that and. If you do want to also kind of practice a little bit for algorithms, then lead code is another page that is very good. Those two pages are like the go-to place. Yeah. To. Well, what I was thinking would be fun is would be to go and compare creating a GUI, you know, creating a few things that we do in AutoHotKey and looking at you know the lines of code you need in AutoHotKey versus in Man, you, that, you know, other languages. If, right? if you just join the page, you you will see a lot of you know yeah. you can you can actually see. Um, there are not many languages that are as succinct as AutoHotKey on many stuff, right? on many, many little stuff that you can do. Um, for now, I actually, I know that there are some, some, some other examples that for algorithms, that's the, the, the here's the thing, for Creating algorithms, which means solutions to specific problems, right? For those kind of things, there are languages that are most succinct, right? But for having results, like I want a GUI in my face, like really quickly. Um, I want to search for an image really quickly. I want to send text or a hot, hot string. I think out of hot key is uh, the, most, uh, the most useful on those categories. And again, that's to the point that you made. That's the reason why people keep mentioning them, mentioning AutoHotKey for those topics, right? Because that's the, those are the topics in which AutoHotKey kind of like excels. Well, the thing I want to add, I mean, and I think you're spot on, but at the same time for programmers, it gets back to, remember, I think it was the last call we did or recorded this. We talked about 
if you have a hammer and you, you want to build your house with that hammer, right? Everyone right. likes to stick with what they know. So if I'm a programmer and let's say I, I program in Python or something else, and I already know how to, to do API calls to, you know, to a web service, I'm not going to go learn that in AutoHotKey. I'm going to use right. the language I already know. But, right. and that's where you, the last bit you just finished up on is like, but hey, there's this other, I need to send, you know, hey, this, the, the API doesn't have this functionality. Well, right. I need to send mouse clicks or, oh, hey, AutoHotKey does that. And so they learned that part. But right. like I had a call the other day with a, a programmer who was a very robust programmer, knew a lot of languages. And I started talking to him about like the, the ACC library and the UI automation, which is what we you know, two, two mm -hmm. approaches that we're looking at to, to automate stuff. And he didn't know it was even possible in AutoHotKey. And I'm like, it, oh, you know, wow. AutoHotKey has a lot of great things that you can do. Um, you know, it, and just people don't end up looking at them, even when you're programmers, because again, they, they have another whole bag of tools that they are they already have right now. Right. Again, with the new people who aren't programmers, they come in, they, they learn to often they're gaming or something and they want to do something simple. And and again, it's not that I don't mean there's any way that there's right or wrong to it, right? But no, no, exactly. over time, when you start realizing like just using controls, right? Like um, with the older style programs, it, with compared right. to sending mouse clicks and mouse move, like my work, right? They're so fast, so reliable. <laughs> If your program has those controls, right? It's right. still amazing. Um, and a lot of people don't know those are even available, right? Uh, to me, when I now and the, and that's the thing. I was just right now kind of like giving it a little bit of thought. Oh, no. um, what is it that makes AutoHotKey like the most unique? And I think if if you ask me, and this is uh, of course I don't know many languages, so probably there are other languages that this is might be easier or, or whatever. But for example, I know that Visual Basic has this and I know that AutoEd has this as well. And basically it's the point of you leveraging the COM objects mm -hmm. in Windows, right? I know that AutoHotKey has this as well. Now, for a language like C Sharp, instead of, instead of you actually connecting to a COM object, it is better to just grab the sources, put it, yeah, into, right. put, it, put it into your file. But of course you have to know how to do all that stuff, right? So, so again, on those languages, it's better to import the source code, which is already there. But for, for a program like mine, I don't want to import the whole source code and compile something. I just want to move my mouse into a specific location and click on it. But if I also have the ability to connect to all come objects, right? That is a plus. And there are not many scripting languages out there that allow me to do this kind of stuff and also have the door open to connect to all come objects. That's the reason why I love AutoHotKey because I can I could switch between very basic stuff, sending text, and then just saying like, okay, now I need a full OCR uh, library, or I, I, I need the whole HTTP request library that is in Windows already, I just connect to the COM object. You see, so I could switch very easily between the two things, right? Or do some file manipulation, you know, right. moving files around or whatever. I mean, there's so many things you can easily do with AutoHotKey. But yeah, I agree. Right. And, it's, and again, it's it's so user-friendly, right? Like it's, right. I, I know you do stuff way more advanced than I do, but I can do a lot of stuff with just basic things. Right, like it, it's crazy. The stuff on the left seemed hard at first, but it really isn't mostly. Uh, as I tell yeah. you, with the uh, the the web service API calls, for me, the hardest part is dealing with the OAuth. It's not the actual API. You know, it's just getting a stupid <laughs> authorization. <laughs> yeah. And again, to that's, your point, that's the most difficult part. because everyone does it differently. You know, right. everyone has their own flavor, even though their APIs are different. But usually, they're it's very simple. But the right. OAuth stuff to me is just always like, oh, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> like we have to get the authorization yeah. and everybody puts their own loops onto it. So yeah, I think um, we are here in, 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 I would say like this image represents exactly the reason why AutoHotKey is so great because you can actually access both things at the same time yeah. and both of them are kind of like easy if yeah. you know what you're doing. Right. So, oh, I, so basically, yeah. you just captured AutoHotKey yeah. in an image. You're, you're right. You know, it, it's, it's an excellent <laughs> point is that it's compared to if we were to redraw this with other languages, for the most part, we would just have the stuff on the left. 
right? Very um, and, and and if we started looking at development time, how long it takes you to do stuff, like you know, then it's like okay, you can do more than you can in auto hockey, I'm sure, another language, but it takes you a lot longer to develop that same code. At least you know. I do me. have to. I do have to point out that these are opinions of people who do not know those languages, because maybe somebody comes in and says, like, right. you know what. Uh, it, you're wrong because I know this language better and I know yeah. how to do that real quickly. But I think the, the point might be that um, even though you can do the stuff in that language, you might rely, you will need to rely on third party libraries to do that. Like for example, yeah. I want to search an image. I will not write the whole code myself. I would just look for a third party library which opens you to a lot of, a bunch of issues. Like you have to trust the library. Every library does it differently and stuff I, like that. Yeah. Um, and, and also what you were just mentioning, you need more lines of code, at least in my experience for AutoHotKey for searching for an image, that's one line of code. And it just returns whether it found it or not. That's it. In, your, in, in, in other languages, you would have to create the function itself import the function from a library or, you know, do those kind of things. And still, you need more lines of code than at a hot key. That's what I would, that's how I would put it yeah. up. Well, right? it, so, and to, 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 to top it off, go to compile something in another language, right? Like there ain't no right clicking in saying compile, at least none I've, I've ever seen. Um, auto <laughs> hockey, it's, it's, it's mind blowing, you know, when you first do that, you're like, now I have an executable. How hard was that? And, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. So basically, I think um, how how you presented this image is very important. It's not only what you were trying to talk about; it actually captures something else a little bit more deep. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so it captures different. a little bit deep, deeper uh, meaning on why Auto Hotkey is so loved by the people who actually use it. Right. This this is kind of like and, a, a, a summary of that. And um, and from the Auto Hotkey, I wish I had it handy. I'd pull it right up. But in the Auto Hotkey survey that we did, you know. I forget the exact percentage, but I think it was like 50% had been using it for more than five years, somewhere. I mean, it was- um, It was yeah. higher, like, more than 10 years. I was actually kind was of surprised. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of like 10 yeah. years and I was surprised, like everybody uses it that much, like for, for that long. Actually, what, what, what it means is that whoever tries this thing stays yeah. with this thing because right. it's yeah. so good, right? It, it does things that other ones don't, at least they're much easier to do, yeah, so. At least, you know what, so, as an example, I, I, I worked uh, for for uh, in a call center before, right? Um, well, I have been working for call centers a lot, for a long time. And most of the times they tell you that you have to write notes. And people, what they do is that they copy the notes and put it into a notepad and keep no. it there. And then you just no. copy paste, right? I did like in half an hour, a small GUI that allows me to select what the topic is. Yeah. And I just add the name of the customer, the phone number of the customer, and hit OK, and it copies the note into the into the into the into the software automatically for me. And I was like, dude, it was just thirty minutes of auto hotkey to do that. Right. Right. I wouldn't actually try that in any other language. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't no. try creating a GUI and actually having different types of notes selected depending right. on different. No, I, I wouldn't try that in any other language or by yeah, no, that's so, yeah. All right, man. Well, I thought this was a, a really fun and interesting topic. And it's just a lot that people don't really discuss about auto hockey and why, why it's an amazing language, right? It's, it really is. It is, it is. And um, I think that most of the topics that have to do with that are actually directly embedded into the forums. And um, as the forums are used more for help than other things, it might be that those topics kind of like pass by and nobody notices them that much, which is the same with these videos. Maybe not that many people watch the video. Um, but again, I think though this topic is very important. Um, as soon as you put it out there, more people get to know about it and probably changes something for the, for the better, right? Because we need more programmers in Navajo Hockey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And at some point I'll, I'll go back and finish that because what I was working on, not only is there, you know, 17 ways to automate programs, but linking to each one of them, you know, linking to the commands and then linking to examples. And this, you know, obviously that, that takes some time. But I okay. think that would be a really helpful thing for people to, 
understand because people come up and then also there's the question like, well, how do I know which one to use? I'm like, uh, unfortunately, it's trial and error, right? It like, it's, you just right. you have to do some testing and understand. But I would, but I would always uh, um, recommend people, and actually, I will. I always lean to an API if it's possible first, and then if that right. doesn't work, then go to the other side. Have, but having said that, even even then, the stuff on the left you could somewhat have a prioritization about, right? Like, you know, I for me, when I know call oh, yeah, yeah, of course, like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, okay. I'm, I'm done. It's so easy. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I would start, I would start in, in a specific order in there, depending right. on what, what I want to do, which is. Yeah, I, we, we talked about creating a tool that would allow you to just start it, drag to the program, and it would actually say, here are the different things you could probably use. And here's the one we actually recommend, right? It's not going to actually write the code for you. But just right. help you make that decision process, right? Because that would that, that would be awesome, Greg. Right? Of course, um, and and this is something that I think it would help a lot of people. Um, for example, in, in in your in your, I remember that there was something that happened a few I don't know weeks ago that you wanted to automate extracting some data from from your website, right? Your WordPress, Absolutely. right? So right. now, yeah. of course, you can do it with a specific set of commands. Like that are that they would fall on the human interface side of it, right? So right. it would be like mimicking how a human yes. would go one by one and right. grabbing the information, right? right? So and then I was saying, like, hold on, hold on, let's see if we can connect to the database first. So right. that, that would be kind of like an API. Yeah. I connect well, to the API to the database yeah. and then extract the information directly. Yeah. It would save so much time, right? Right. Well, but let's let's keep going down that example, right? Because I started right. off saying. Well, I can I can get, navigate to the page, rip it with web scraping, and then go to the next person, right? And I'm like, this is stupid, but it would work. And then that's when I reach out to you. And then you, re the second you said, well, it's it's um it's WordPress, and right then I'm like, well, if it's WordPress, it's a database. And, the, and then I'm like, I'm the admin to the database, like I have no way. To do this. <laughs> right. So like like yeah. So then me, you, and Tank got on, and we were going into the. PHP my admin is that what's called? Right. So so we were trying to see the database data, right? So we yep. were actually trying to look at how the tables were structured and so right. on. Right. So we did all that and we got it down to where we could hit a button and it would run, it created a view and it would you know allow us to download a file, right? Right. But but then the other day I was on a call with Alessandro and some guy in Italy, and uh, we were chatting um, and then. Um, because I knew Maestrith was playing with MySQL and Auto Hockey. Right. So you're gonna, I don't know if I told you that. So we had this call with the three of us and we worked through some stuff. Um in 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 Italy it was late, so the other guy had to go. And so Maestrith and I are still sitting there talking. And I'm like, hey, why don't you help me create a, a database on one of my servers just so we can, you know, have it as an example. So we worked through it all. Um, I even get done with the call and Alessandro later writes me and says, hey, by the way, that was really fun. And I noticed this about that the, the script that you guys had. And I'm like, and I literally wrote the guy and said, yeah, I'm not, you know, thank you for, you know, your thoughts and feedback, right. but I don't see me really like doing this because I don't, I don't want, I don't write a lot of, especially like, you know, stuff dealing with databases, um, you mm -hmm. know, Maestrith will, but I, you know, I'm, you know, whatever. Um, right, and right. then all of a sudden my head goes like, oh my God, like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I can go programmatically and connect to the database that you and Tank can help me go extract from. So right. I, I, you know, I just basically changed the table um, and the, the right. password. So you just, you just to, changed it, right? Yeah. And now you I'm just, programmatically you just, you just changed, right. I don't have to log in, it dumps it. It actually converts it all into an auto hockey object for me with all the right. data. And I'm like, right. oh my, oh my God, I'm like, you realize this this alone now because there's so many WordPress plugins that don't have like a, a public API for doing stuff right. and you have to manually do stuff. Like we can rip whatever we want out from those databases, right? So like, so, so basically, if the if the plugin saves information into the WordPress database, right, you connect to it, and you can get whatever you grab want the data. Right. You don't have to right. actually uh, use the plugin for anything else. In right. this case, just just to capture the data. Well, that's and, and that's the thing. A lot of the plugins will. They'll give you the plugin for free, but then for like either API access or whatever, they'll charge they you. They would money, charge right? you, right? This negates the whole thing, you know, because you well, can grab again, what you want. And now, now, now that's the point. Well, it doesn't negate it. The, the only thing is that uh, 
it makes it easier for you if you're a programmer. The, the, the point of them is that they do that for people who don't know how to code, right? right. So, yeah. so in that case, they, they still, of course, that there's some millions of people that, who don't code. But for us programmers, as soon as you know how to do stuff, and actually, as soon as you understand application programming interfaces, as soon as you get that, you don't go back. You, you say like, no way, right. this is yeah. way too fun, right? <laughs> too much fun. Um, and it is so easy to actually grab the information in a way that um, um, takes exactly. literally yeah. seconds. Yeah. Well, That's let's, what it takes. Let's, let's switch slight topics to talk about an actual API web service, right? And the, you know, because I knew a lot of, I used to do a lot of web scraping, not as much anymore. But with web scraping, you're navigating to a page, the page loads, you have the whole HTML, the page loading. Often you're ripping, but initially I used to grab the entire page and then write a regex to, to compartmentalize. Later, well, Jackie showed me like in a table how easy it is to get exactly what you want. You know, we're looping over it. So I'm like, oh my God, it's so much better. But I'm sorry, then, was, uh, you know, yeah. you learn about APIs and you don't even have to deal with the HTML, right? You can do an API call and literally get like in JSON. A JSON, and, a JSON yeah. answer for it. Just so, like want, right? so uh, yeah, exactly. And this is the thing. In this left side, this win HTTP request object, especially yeah. that one, yeah. If you know that one, oh. you already know all the APIs for web servers because that's the one that you're going to be using for all those APIs. Yeah. And um, to your point, instead of dealing with the whole HTML page, the only thing that you have to deal with a JSON file that is very small. And that means that API calls cost absolutely nothing. You can make thousands of APO calls well, in seconds. Yeah, more importantly, it's, yeah, or concisely, you want to, um, a given browser, you know, refreshing the page can be like 20 API calls, right? Actually right. loading different stuff to that page. But if right. you realize you just want this one little bit, you don't have to do the other 19. You get the right. one, you know, and right, it's just exactly. JSON instead of everything else. Like it's, it's crazy the different, now, not all pa older pages, they, you know, they're not built that way, right? So you, you still, some of them you have to go get, you know, well, and there's also, I know this is confusing people are doing this, but um, there's a, like a public API version. And then if they don't have that, you can still often like with um, Wireshark or Fiddler, look at the traffic and mimic the API calls. Um, right. but, but some of those even, no matter what, they actually return back the data wrapped in HTML. In, in, right, yeah. exactly. So you get you get whatever the, the, the real answer you wanted, right? So, um, and again, I do think that um, human interface of uh, how you categorize it here, mm -hmm. um, mimicking human interfaces, um, they do have a place in programming. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of sure. things that you cannot actually do. Right. But if you're thinking like a programmer, and so, so this is the, the distinction that I want to do. So if you're a person who you're not a coder, but you want to do stuff quicker, the, in, doing the human interface things are kind of like the easiest way for you to go and the fastest way for you to go. Now, if you are a person who code either by hobby or you want to actually concentrate on uh, coding very often, then learning APIs is the way to go because it would save you a lot of times. You would actually then resort to human interface if you do not have an API that actually does whatever you are trying to do. So again, it, it, some, and you will find that, for example, in some places where the, the, da the data that you want to pick up, the company wants to protect that in a way, like for example, I don't want you to make thousands of calls to my page just to grab all the links, for example. That's something that they might want to protect. Um, I'm not talking about sensitive data in this case. I'm talking about like, I don't want you to make 1000 API calls to my site just to get all the links. So I will not allow you to do that, but I need that. I really need that. I need it for something that I'm working on and I need those links. How can I do that? Well, in that case, if, you're kind of like fighting with the company at this point. But again, you can still do it by manually doing it, by doing the human interface stuff and doing it manually, right? So that's what you wanted me to do. Well, I'm going to do it. Now, I'm going to do it a little bit faster. <laughs> that's all there is to it. <laughs> but I'm going to do it however you wanted me to do it. Right? Well, 
to slightly <laughs> tweak what you're saying, just so people make sure they're following you, you're going to mimic doing right, that, right, right. right. Because um, you're going to make send the mouse movement, send the key. Right. Uh, you're not doing it, right? It's just I'm not doing it myself. Approach. I just did my. I just no. did a. But as far as they're concerned, it. right. As right. far as they're concerned, I'm, yes. I'm doing it myself, right? So no, I'm just a fast human. That's what. That's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was there was there was a site where it was just like that and uh, and they they flagged our account and I wrote them and um and I'm like what are you talking about and they're like well you're automating I'm like you know my email address at the the thing is like Joe at the automator, the automator like, right. I don't know what you're talking about you know <laughs> and I said, oh, no I, that's way of me it's all I do is I you know I, I streamline copying you know when I get the thing right. and paste it but I'm not doing what I'm right doing. i'm not doing whatever you're saying i'm doing yeah. right <laughs> always deny you know always deny <laughs> that's true so anyway in this case i think um um for this topic i think we have covered most of the of the ideas yeah. and concepts um and i and i do like this image this is a very important image actually awesome man. well thanks mm -hmm. this is a fun talk yeah we're gonna be talking later then all right man. see you bye